Section 6.2, areas under the standard normal curve. So the standard normal curve is a special normal curve where the mean, or mu, is always zero. So if we think about that curve we've been looking at, zero is in the middle. And it has a standard deviation, or sigma, of one. So this is the definition of standard normal. Um, and so let's label it. We'll put zero in the middle, which I already did. And then since standard deviation is one, we go by ones. So we go one, two, three on the right. Remember, we usually stop at three standard deviations. And then we go negative one, negative two, negative three on the left. Um, and this is a version of like standardizing a variable. Um, and the z-score is really nice and easy. I'm actually going to use the letter z, and you'll see why. So we'll do z minus the mean, minus zero, over one, which just means we get z over one, or z. So it just is a z-score. So the standard normal curve represents z-scores. So it's our way of standardizing all data sets to kind of fit the same curve. So if we want to find area under the standard normal curve, um, this is the menu on the calculator, which we'll go over in a second. So we'll hit second, we'll hit vars, we'll do that in the next example. And then we'll find this thing called normal CDF. So as we do example one, I'll show you where that is. So example one, we want to find the area between negative 2.56. So let's shade it before we use the calculator. So we have zero in the middle. So negative one, negative two. So negative 2.56, a little bit past negative two. And then 0.47, so on the right we have one, two, three. So it'd be a little bit in between zero and one, 0.47. And then we'll just shade in between. So I don't know how much area this is. I don't know, maybe 50%, maybe more. Visually, it's a little hard to tell. Um, we can't use the empirical rule because it's not at those nice endpoints. So we'll pull out the calculator. Um, so it might look different on yours. Remember, I have videos if you have the different menus than me because um, the one on my iPad is a little bit different than the other one. So I do have separate videos if you have like the command menus. Um, but so in the calculator, we're going to hit second. We're going to go to VARS because um, we're going to distribution, and then normal CDF should be the second one down. And then if you have menus, lower will be the lower score, so lower is negative 2.56. Um, if you don't have menus, then you just go in order, you go lower, comma, upper. Otherwise, your calculator asks you for the lower and the upper, and upper would be the 0.47, because that's our upper bound. And then end parentheses if you have menus like me, otherwise tell it lower and upper, and then hit enter and it'll tell you the area. So 0 0.6756 is the area in between these two z-scores. So right now we're just kind of learning z-scores in the curve, but eventually we'll convert regular data into this so we can find areas with real data. So let's find area to the right of 1.56. So 0, 1, 2, 3 on the right side. 1.56 would be about halfway. So this is just a tail. So my lower is 1.56. And then my upper is not 3 since it keeps going. My upper is actually infinity. Um, remember the curve goes on indefinitely. So it technically doesn't stop at 3. Even though there's very little past 3, it still keeps going. So we're going to do normal CDF. So for lower, we'll type 1.56, and then you can search, but your calculator doesn't have an infinity button. So the nice trick for infinity is 10 to the 99. So go ahead and find that menu again. Second, bars, normal CDF, lower 1.56, upper 10 to the 99, and I get an area of about 0594, which is about almost 6%, right? 5.9%. So we're just finding areas right now. We're just practicing a calculator function. All right, let's shade the next two. Um, we want the area to the left of 2.56. So 2.56 would be almost to the end, right? You'll see that we're actually gonna shade most of the curve because the left side would be left. 
So it should be almost one, right? Remember the entire curve is one for 100%. So I expect it to be close to one, but not quite. So 2.56 represents my upper, because that's the right side, the right side's upper. So my lower would be, instead of infinity, it's negative infinity. And we'll use negative 10 to the 99. Right, the left side is a negative. So we'll do normal CDF again. Our lower will be negative 10 to the 99, and our upper will be 2.56. Make sure you hit the negative sign and not the subtraction sign, common error. And you get 0.9948, which is almost one, like we said. Right, it's close to one because it's almost the whole curve. All right, one final example. So one final normal curve, zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, negative three. And we want the area to the right of 4.6. So 4.6 is technically there to the right. Just means we have very, very, very little But it still exists, even though, again, most is between negative 3 and 3, right? There's still a very, very, very tiny amount past 3. So our lower will be 4.6. And then since we're going bigger, our upper will still be infinity. And I'm just expecting a very small number because there's very little area. So let's check this out. Normal CDF. So I really recommend drawing the curve every time. I think it helps you see... Um, kind of how big the area might be if it's close to one, close to zero, somewhere in between. So visually, I know this is close to zero. So we're gonna go back to normal CDF. Our lower will be 4.6, zero, and our upper is infinity, which is 10 to the 99. And I should get a really small number. And so you're looking at this and you're thinking it's two. Remember, probabilities are always between zero and one. So we have to pay extra close attention when we have those E's. So anytime it's bigger than one, it means you probably have an E and it's not actually bigger than one because probability can't be bigger than one. So it's E to the negative six, which means we take two, we put a decimal place after the two, and then we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Basically it means one, two, three, four, five zeros, and then two takes the sixth spot. So it's a very, very, very small probability, like we said. And that's how we use this curve. So as we go through the chapter, we'll see why we want to use this. Right now we're just practicing how to use it, and so it'll have more purpose soon.